Hey, Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. We're getting ready to go into a crawl space here in Lenore City, Tennessee, and we're going to do a pre-inspection, then we're going to fix it, then we'll show you the post-inspection later. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, this plastic. Okay, so this plastic looks like a garbage bag, a used garbage bag, and it's because they have gravel underneath the plastic. If you have a gravel bed under plastic, it will wear out whenever you got contractors coming in and out of the crawl space and putting their knees all over and all that. So if you're going to do a crawl space encapsulation, it would be a great idea to do an underlayment if you have gravel. All right, so that way you separate the plastic, the vapor barrier from the gravel itself and it'll give your uh, plastic a longer life. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is since we uh, come in the door, we're right here by the heating and air unit. Um, just remember that heating and air systems will pick up whatever's down here. So you want to make sure your duct is sealed really well. Uh, of course, the aero sealed duct sealing system is a great way to do that. Um, I can see it looks like where they've already cut out an access point right here and they did a great job putting it back. So that tells me that they probably had their ducts cleaned in the past. Uh, by the way, it is a good idea to make sure your ducts are clean before air sealing, but it's not necessary. You can actually seal without duct cleaning, but you know, you're, you're, you can clean after the aero seal as well, just to give you an idea. So you, if, if it's in your budget to maybe do the sealing first and then the cleaning later, you can still do that. A couple other things I want you to notice is right here, I got two condensate lines going into this pump. Now we never, uh, put our condensate lines in an existing pump. We always have its own pump because if for some reason the dehumidifier, especially in the summertime, it is going to be using or taking a lot of water out of the air and it will put a big strain on this pump. So if for some reason you got the dehu pumping in here and your HVAC pumping in here, it could be too much for the pump to handle. So I recommend you have the dehu on its own condensate pump or you run it to the sump pump if you happen to have a sump pump. Now we are going to do a soda blast on this crawl space, but no trench or anything like that. They're not taking any standing water. It's all about humidity and reducing mold levels. And then of course, insulating and things like that. So all this insulation will come out. We will then insulate the walls and all that. Okay, so this house also has a vent a uh, cover on the outside that you can manually open and close. And unfortunately that is not enough to control humidity or to keep humidity out. So we always wanna recommend you do at least a two inch foam board with spray foam insulation on the inside. So that way you're not only stopping the air from coming in, but also insulating from the elements outside. So this looks like it's burnt insulation. So if you've got fiberglass near a bulb okay you want to make sure it stays up properly because it looks like it's fallen and then the heat of the bulb has actually uh, burnt the fiberglass fiberglass is uh, not supposed to be in contact with anything hot uh, for example if you do any type of attic insulation and you have recessed lights there are uh, ic rated lights which is uh, insulation contact rated and then there's non-ic rated lights so for example an led a uh, can light or recess light would be okay to contact the insulation because it doesn't put off a lot of heat. But if you've got like a flood lamp in the can light, then you have to put uh, like a 10 mat uh, uh, recess light cover over that before you put any insulation around it. So you gotta make sure that you don't have a potential fire hazard with uh, insulation coming in contact with the hot bulbs of your lights, whether it's in the crawl space or up in the attic. All right, so we get questions a lot about, I've got a um, gas furnace in my crawl space. If I seal it up, you know, uh, is that gonna damage uh, or cause uh, CO2 leakage in my house? Well, think about it this way. Um, you can have a gas furnace in your basement. Uh, you can have a gas furnace in your attic, you can have a gas furnace in your um, garage, uh, if your heating and air contractor installed the furnace correctly, there should not be any problems with CO2 buildup and uh, you shouldn't have to worry about pilot lights getting blown out and all that kind of thing. And this is a good example. Here we've got the uh, PVC 
uh, exhausting uh, the uh, fumes from the furnace out of the crawl space. So if, you, uh, if you're concerned about encapsulating your crawl space with a gas furnace, as long as it was done properly into code, shouldn't be any issues at all. The uh, flip side of that is we also get a lot of questions about where does the makeup air come from once you seal up the crawl space and uh, you know put in a ventilation fan or something like that uh, with a, uh, a properly done crawl space. Well, just think about it this way. It is virtually impossible to completely air seal a crawl space, okay? Unless you are spray foaming every square inch from the joist to the sill plate to the rim joist all the way down to the foundation it is impossible there there is no way you are going to stop air from coming in your crawl space okay whether it's through the door through small penetrations through a crack in the cinder block through where the sill plate meets the cinder block through the plumbing penetration through the subfloor where it joins together there's always going to be places for air to get into the crawl space, just like in an attic. I mean, if you completely air seal an attic, uh, there's still, if you're air sealing your crawl space that well, then you can create a makeup air situation to pull air into the crawl space. Uh, but you wouldn't know whether you did it that well or not, unless you did a blower door test or some kind of ventilation test on the crawl space. So, I don't see that being an issue, but again, every code is different. So make sure you check with local building code whenever you're talking about sealing your crawl space, especially if you have a gas furnace or a gas water heater or something like that in there. You wanna keep those uh, combustibles out of the house. So since I used the word impossible to uh, allow air to come in, that's where you as the homeowner, you can actually control the air that comes in, like I mentioned before, which is what the dehumidifier is all about. I mean, this is a great example of uh, an open vented crawl space and people putting in ventilation. I can't tell you how many times people ask me, can I just put in a vent fan and that be good enough and not install the dehumidifier? Well, they have a vent fan. We just turned it off briefly just so you uh, don't hear the noise. They had a vent fan running when we got here. It was set on 50% humidity. So as long as it doesn't get below 50% humidity, it's going to run and look what the humidity is. It's uh, 77%, okay? And we're right here next to the vent fan. So closing up a crawl space and just ventilating is still gonna have humidity issues, uh, but it's, it's moving air out, which is what you want, but it's not controlling humidity, which is why we do the active ventilation system and dehumidifier together. You see the condensation on the ducts and everything, and uh, obviously that is from the humidity, which was in the 70s, being inside uh, the crawl space. And then these ductwork are really cold. So hot, humid air hitting a cold ductwork creates condensation. But look what else it creates. It creates pools of water in and on the plastic. So what happens is, as this uh, ductwork condensates, and it's most likely coming from the main trunk line because although flex will condensate, uh, the hard metal ducts will condensate more because there is metal in these guys and we've seen it to where they will give off moisture as well. But when that uh, humidity makes the condensation happen, hits the vapor barrier, that vapor barrier is then holding the moisture. So even though it's 76% humidity, as this gets an opportunity, it will give the moisture back up to the air to raise the humidity. So, you know, you've got to make sure that you control humidity first so that you don't have this condensation because this is just a, a reoccurring event where it gives off moisture, drops to here, this gives off moisture. Now you got two things uh, adding to the humidity plus the outside humidity trying to get in. So this is, this is bad. All right, so uh, towards the front where we were, mm, not so bad. Get back here in the center where there's actually water all over the plastic. We got all these duct work that's just dripping. And look at this. This has got some kind of sap growing out of it. This is a wood rot or wood destroying fungus that is just eating away at this wood. And this insulation is soaking wet. So all that's doing is feeding the moisture back into the wood. 
and there is no standing water. There is uh, no flooding, I should say. There's standing water from condensation on the plastic, but this isn't a flooded crawl space. This is all from humidity and condensation. So if you think that installing a dehumidifier is expensive, try dealing with that. On this shot right here, I don't know technically what this is called. I call this striations. It's almost like the mold's root system is getting into the wood and just starting to basically eat the wood from the inside out, similar to what a termite would do. And from what I understand, uh, termites and mold share uh, the same environment. So if you've got a lot of uh, wood destroying fungus, then chances are you're, uh, you're giving way to uh, termites as well. And if this went on long enough, you would start to see this piece of wood sink down into here and you would start to see this wood sink as well and then the house starts to shift down so hopefully we caught this soon enough to where we can get the uh, mold soda blasted the fungus soda blasted get this place dried out and not have to do any kind of sistering of joists or any kind of structural repair but we won't really know that until we get it dried out and we get the mold addressed so Anyway, this is sad. That's all I can say is uh, that they had no idea this was going on down here. So if you've not been in your crawl space in a while, whether you think there's a problem or not, even if you've got it encapsulated, if you're not inspecting it at least every six months, which is what we do, we have service agreements where we send ninjas out every six months to maintenance the equipment and uh, check everything to make sure there's not plumbing leaks and stuff like that. That's one of the ways Crawl Space Ninja creates a worry-free crawl space. So don't always hire someone based on price. Hire them based on customer service. And then you'll always have a worry-free crawl space, worry-free basement, worry-free attic. So my name is Michael Church with Crawl Space Ninja. We appreciate you going on this tour for, uh, with us. And later, we'll probably do some time lapse of this uh, crawl space getting fixed and after that we'll come back in and do an after video and we'll come back to this spot and some of the others we've looked at and show you what it turned out to be hope you make it a happy and blessed day we'll see you later mm -hmm.